coach. Hey guys, how we doing? Good. So uh, first of all, like always, I want to thank you guys uh, for coming out and, and covering Penn State football. Uh, we don't take that for granted. Thought we had a really good crowd. I'm not, I'm not sure what the numbers were like, uh, but I thought it was a really good crowd. Um, weather held up really good for us. That was really the first time for us to get in Beaver Stadium this spring, which is unusual. We usually get in at least three times uh, you know, in five weeks throughout the spring ball calendar. Um, and I thought for the most part, our guys handled it well. Um, overall, it's, it's hard for me to say uh, until I watch the tape. I'm trying to kind of, it's different when you're watching one team. I'm trying to watch both teams and kind of manage it all in my mind. But I did think we had too many pre-snap penalties on offense. Um, you know, I know it wasn't extremely loud, but we hadn't done any noise during spring ball. And I think some of the young players got affected by that. On the offensive line, we had, we had too many of those. Um, I think Amin Vanover is a pretty cool story for us. Uh, I think he's going to have a huge year for us. Um, and he's a guy, in my opinion, that's done it the right way. Uh, it hasn't always been easy for him or us. Uh, his journey has been challenging at times. And he's, he's really stuck it out, you know, and just got better and better and better and better. I think he's going to have a really big year. I'm really proud of him. Um, I thought Jameel Lyons flashed today. I thought Jameel Lyons flashed today. I think he's got a, a guy that's got a bright future. You guys saw some examples of that last year. I think we'll con continue to see that. Um, I thought we had 15 really physical competitive practices. I thought today was good. Got a lot of work in, got a bunch of situations covered. The end of the game there, you guys don't know this, but we're talking on the headset. We're saying, okay, let's treat this two-minute situation like we need a field goal to win the game, or let's treat this two-minute situation like we need a touchdown to win the game. So we were operating. I called a timeout, which I think was probably confusing. Um, when the offense was on maybe like the seven-yard line coming out in a two-minute situation, that was actually a timeout for the defense, which confused uh, the quarterbacks because uh, the board was still showing two timeouts. Um, but I thought it was really good. It was a physical 15 practice. We were able to stay healthy today, uh, which I thought was really good. A couple other notes that we kind of wrote down. I want to make sure that I cover with you. I didn't think we started fast enough on offense. Again, we started the game with a, a true freshman offensive lineman jumping off sides. Um, we got to start better on offense, so we're able to get into a rhythm and get ahead of the sticks. We were able to use the iPads today for the first time. Um, wasn't perfect, but there's value in getting some reps of that in Beaver Stadium before the season. We'll do the same thing during training camp. We had the headset technology um, all spring, not what we'll have for next year because we only had one on defense and two on offense. That's how we chose to use the three units that we got. But I thought that was valuable today. Had some issues with glare on the screen, so we're going to have to look at how we can adjust those things. Um, too many third longs, like I said, we got off schedule, but overall, I thought really good. You know, I thought really good. Uh, and I was pleased with how our spring, we laid a foundation to go into summer camp with really good competition. Really next on the schedules, all the players will meet with their position coaches Monday, all day Monday, all day Tuesday, and then half of the day on Wednesday, then the coaches will hit the road and travel Wednesday night to go recruit. I'll start my uh, meetings once they're done, their meetings with their coaches. I'll meet with every player on the roster. It usually takes me about three weeks to knock that out half hour uh, per player. Uh, and that will be valuable as well. As we know with what's going on with college football, this could be an interesting couple weeks uh, for, for everybody in college football. Uh, we just had a discussion about that in the locker room as well. Um, but I'm pleased, I'm pleased with where we're at we do got some work to do, obviously, between now and summer camp uh, and West Virginia. But I like the foundation that we laid this spring. So I know that was long, but I do open it up to questions. We'll start with Mark and Rich. Is this something new? Yes, it is. Very nice. Can I see that? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Mark. James, uh, Neil and Dave weren't here, so you didn't have to explain the timeout thing. So we Wonderful. <laughs> hey, in all, in all seriousness, by way of housekeeping, can you give us an update on Keon Gray's status? with the program, given some of the reports that are out there. We saw 
I was on a roster who wasn't here. Yeah, I'm really happy to talk about any of the guys that played in the game today uh, and are in the locker room. Uh, besides that, I, I don't have a whole lot to tell you. Rich? James, are, what have you seen this spring that would make you very comfortable going into the big, going into the season with this group of wide receivers? Well, I, I think like you saw today, a bunch of guys touched the ball and, and made plays. Um, we were able to distribute the football around. Uh, I've had all the faith uh, in the world in our wide receivers in terms of talent and ability. Um, we got to take the next step. And I saw them take a step this spring. We're going to need to take another step this summer. The positive thing is you can, you can really improve defensively and offensively in the passing game over the summer. It's hard to do that in the run game. Um, I think we're going to be very specific on the things we're working on and how we're training and developing. Um, but we have the talent in the room. Uh, the reality is we, we got to take this next step and we got to do it on a consistent basis and we got to make plays against all the people on our schedule. So uh, all those guys are in the locker room for a reason. Uh, we have belief in those guys. We believe they're ready to take the next step. I think Trey was a good example today. You know, him getting hurt last year was, you know, was significant. So having a healthy trade back is helpful too. Tyler and then Riley. Hey, hey James over here. Hey, Tom. Um, Quinn Martin, a couple touchdowns today. Uh, limited carries, but he made the most of them. Just curious how you would kind of describe his first semester, his first uh, spring ball experience with you guys, and, and kind of what it means for him moving forward into the summer. Yeah, you know, um, you guys don't get to see this all the time, but he has some bumps and bruises, so he missed, he missed a decent amount of time this spring, so I don't have a true evaluation. You know, what I will tell you is he's an awesome kid. Um, he's learned the offense really well. I do think he's got really good vision. Um, but I think between now and, and West Virginia, he's got a lot of work to do, and I think he'll do it. I think, I think he'll have a chance to be you know, competing to be in that rotation in, in training camp. Cam, I thought, had a really good spring as well and was out there more to be evaluated. But that's one of these things that all of our guys got to understand, like the number one ability in football is availability. They got to be out there to, to be developed every single day, and they got to be out there to be evaluated every single day. So um, I would like to see more out of them, but I do think it was a foundation that's been laid with them that will allow him to make significant process uh, progress this summer and be able to go into training camp and legitimately compete. Riley from Sauber. Hey coach, just kind of take us through the decision not to have uh, Nick and Katron out there tonight. Um, so one of those guys, uh, like a number of guys in our roster, we make decisions no different than we did with Olu Fashanu last year. Uh, and then another, you know, so, so Nick, that was that decision. And then with Katron, um, Katron had some bumps and bruises that didn't really allow him. I think if you came to this spring practice, I'm not sure if you benefited at the, at the weekly um, press conferences and out of practice, but Katron, you know, didn't, didn't go this spring. So um, nothing that is going to be a problem this summer for summer training, nothing that's going to be a problem for next year. But you know, I don't think it's probably a surprise to really anybody in here because I don't think you guys saw them in any of the practices you came to either. So, um, and, and Nick, you know, we make modifications. He, he got a little banged up this week in practice, but we were going to modify him. You know, spring ball for a lot of guys is an opportunity to move up and be evaluated, but also guys that we feel like have established themselves, um, especially when we got to figure out who the third back's going to be for next year. Uh, that was really kind of the main focus. So we're strategic about that every single year, where guys are at in the program and how established they are. And even when they take reps, we modify some of those guys' reps um, to get the other guys. Like, to be honest with you, you guys, you guys know that Drew Shelton, like, you know, did go in the spring. Well, that was, like, really valuable for, like, Lucci and Javen. They got they got 1,000 reps this spring, which, which was great. So... Some of it is strategic, and some of it's just how things play out. Sober than pickle. James, how comfortable are you with the state of the wide receiver room right now, specifically the top of the depth chart? Okay, I, I thought I already answered that. The wide receivers in general. Okay, I love our wide receivers. They have a bunch of talent in the room. I think they got a chance to take the next. I, you know, and I think they got a chance to take take the next step. I believe they're going to take the next step. 
Um, I think Marcus has done a really good job this spring. This summer is going to be really important. The positive thing is in college football, you can improve in the passing game in the summer. We're going to do those things. We believe it. Two more. Pickle them, Ben. Coach, you mentioned the portal in your opening statement. Are there any positions you want to look at from an incoming perspective and then from the outgoing side that how comfortable or I guess what are your expectations for What your, did I say about the, the, the opening That could be an interesting couple of weeks. I thought that may have been the portal, but um, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, uh, either way, um, yeah. From an incoming perspective, are there any positions or sides of the ball or things you might want to look at? And then from an outgoing side, just what's your comfort level with where things are with your roster right now? Okay. Um, so when I say interesting couple weeks in college football, there's a lot of reasons why that, that's interesting. Um, for me, that's what these meetings are going to be about. The individual meetings with the position coaches, um, the meetings with me. Um, we, we've had some conversations with some guys already. Um, but at the end of the day, you never really know until it happens. I think we got pretty good relationships where guys for the most part, have been very transparent and honest with us, and we do the same thing with them. Um, one of the things that I think is, is really important is I'm still a big believer in transformational relationships and college football being transformational. Um, and I'm worried that college football is becoming more and more transactional. And that has to be in both directions. So um, that's something I talk to our guys all, all the time about. And to be honest with you, 99% of the time, what's good for the individual is good for the team and vice versa. So that's the good thing that I feel good about as a head coach, that I can have these conversations and be honest. Because the reality is, more times than not, maybe not in the short term, maybe not in the time that they want it to be in the, you know, on their schedule, in their mind, but more times than not, it is. Um, We'll include our leadership council in that process. We did that last week. Ask them what they think we need and have them take ownership in those decisions as well and be comfortable with those decisions as well. Um, you guys have heard me say this a ton of times over the last 10 years. For me to make the best decisions for our program, I wanna hear from all. I wanna hear from the players, the staff, and the coaches. And that's including decisions like this. Um, but it's a challenging time in, in, in college football. And it's a challenging time for head coaches to make these types of decisions uh, and the impact that it has on, on your roster in a lot of different ways and a lot of different ramifications. Hey. Hey, Coach. Hey, Ben. Um, you've got six teams on your roster or on your schedule this year that you either haven't really played in kind of West Virginia and then just a bunch of teams that you haven't played. How does that impact the scout of everyone that's on there moving forward when it's really kind of twice as large as it normally is and do you even look into some of these programs considering some of the changes? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a fair question. Um, so I think a couple things, and I think you guys know this, I'm very much like focus on the task at hand, be present, be where your feet are, one and O mentality. I mean, you guys have heard that to the point where you don't, don't really want to hear it again after 10 years. But um, I do think there's an aspect to your point that you want to look at these things and have an understanding and awareness. But the challenge is there's so much turnover in college football with coaches that it's kind of hard to make predictions and, and really get an idea at this time of year who and what you're going to face. And then not only that, the roster can look so different in both directions, back to what you were talking about, Greg. So you got to do some work on that, but we'll pretty much do our four game study that we normally do in our first four games to get ahead on them. We'll take a look at some schedules, excuse me, to your point, some games on the schedule, some teams that we're not as familiar with, that haven't played before. Uh, we will do some of that, but if you're not careful, you're gonna spend so many time, so much time chasing these ghosts that may not present themselves in week eight that you mess up week one. And I know, trust me, I hear it from you guys, uh, I hear it from the fans. I'm very aware of what we need to do. But I'll also say there's a lot of programs 
that find ways to win games like that and then lose games that they're not supposed to. So the fine line of balance of the amount of respect that you have to pay to both and the challenge and the difficulty of being consistent week in and week out and then adding the cherry on top and finding a way to win those couple where you're not favored, if that makes sense. So um, we'll, we'll probably keep our approach similar to what it's done in the past, but we'll, we'll do some digging uh, on travel plans. Obviously, we got the West Coast travel, which is going to be a big part of our studies. And then just get a general feel for who these programs have been. Uh, and then get back to you know, focusing on Penn State and, and our first couple games. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Again, I appreciate you guys being out. Next time we'll see them is when? <laughs> June. June. Huh? June. June. Don't we usually have something in June? June. I tell you what, and I am so looking forward to June to see you guys. <laughs>